Okay, so this video is uh, designed to show you the most common mistakes from the fairy tale paragraph. You are expected to compare your work to uh, these different examples and verify that you're not making the same mistakes. <coughs> uh, so uh, there are some color codes here in this video to indicate some special kinds of mistakes and uh, uh, if you would like you can take a picture of this screen so that you can refer to it uh, without uh, rewinding back to the beginning of the video uh, each time. If you're curious about specific colors then uh, you'll want to know uh, what they mean here. So um, this first mistake uh, is extremely common and it occurs when well it occurs when students try to imitate something that they saw in the paragraph from class and what we've got here is a reduced adverb clause and uh, if you're going to use this type of re reduced adverb clause where you have a, a verb uh, it appears to be a verb it's really an adverb. <coughs> a verb in ing uh, uh, without a subject, then uh, after you, you state this idea, after the comma, you have to mention clearly who was doing that action. Uh, so uh, 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 this one right here uh, is an incomplete sentence. Um, uh, we'll see another one later uh, that's mm, a complete sentence but uh, has a dangling modifier. Uh, the correction was made here and uh, after the comma um, this person was referring to Little Red Riding Hood and uh, you, you can say she here which mentions the person who was doing that action remembering or uh, you can say the character's name Little Red Riding Hood that's how to make the correction. So mistake and then correction. <clears throat> uh, here we have another really common mistake. Um, what happens is uh, students start with this idea, for example, and then they say when. Well, <clears throat> when you say when, you create a, a dependent clause and you have to explain the second half of the idea. Just like if I start telling you a story and I say when I wake up every morning you're waiting to hear the rest of the story mm -hmm. and uh, this occurs uh, even when you're just telling an example you have to complete the idea so here's the mistake uh, it's an incomplete sentence and here's the correction you can compare the two mm -hmm. In this next example, we've got some different kinds of mistakes. First, we've got uh, some capitalization mistakes. Uh, the proper name to a story uh, should be capitalized. Um, the first the, the first T here is capitalized, but the little words like prepositions and articles are not capitalized. So it should be capital T, capital S, and capital S. <coughs> Uh, here we have a grammar mistake and here we have some really bad uh, spelling mistakes and uh, down here we have the correction to those mistakes. Uh, here's another example of um, uh, incorrectly completing a sentence with a reduced adverb clause. Um, you can see here that uh, somebody's got what they think is they probably think it's a verb in ing and uh, then uh, later in the sentence uh, they don't mention who was doing that action uh, they confused us which is basically what happens uh, when, when you have a dangling modifier uh, we don't know who was doing the action that's what that means uh, and, and so uh, it's got to be corrected Here's the correction, and uh, I had to interpret the author's idea. 
I was able to determine that it was Rapunzel that was always putting her love first above all. So uh, if you're using special grammar uh, and you might have gotten the idea from the paragraph from class about the three little pigs, well, make sure that you're not making this same mistake. So what's happening here? Well, in this case, I've got uh, the topic sentence and the concluding sentence extracted from the paragraph. We don't see the rest of the paragraph. <clears throat> Why did I do this? Well, it's because I always compare the topic sentence and the concluding sentence. They are supposed to correspond. The concluding sentence is supposed to reaffirm the topic sentence. It's supposed to be a reflection of the topic sentence. So when I see that they don't correspond, uh, that's a big mistake to me. <clears throat> so what I did here is I rewrote the concluding sentence and I made it correspond nicely to the topic sentence. Uh, now we've got some screenshots of some more uh, paragraphs over the same assignment. <clears throat> um, this is a huge mistake and uh, uh, everybody should be aware of this. Make sure that you're not making this mistake. This happens when the name of the fairy tale and the name of the main character are the same. Students think that uh, they can be lazy or maybe they think, maybe they're worried about being repetitive and they make this mistake. In the fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood, well, that's the name of the fairy tale, okay? Uh, comma, um, and then you mention the name of the main character. Well, coincidentally, they have the same name. The fairy tale is named after the main character, but that doesn't give you permission to not mention the main character's name, especially because it's the first time you mention her in, in your paragraph. So in standard English, and this is standard, you will never see this mistake anywhere, in the fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood, Little Red Riding Hood is a little girl that is dumb, etc., etc. Doesn't matter what story you have. In the story of Tarzan, comma, Tarzan is abandoned by his parents in the jungle when he's just a baby. Okay, don't make that mistake. I'm calling that the, the name mistake. The name mistake. There are some other mistakes here. A run-on sentence is when you have uh, two complete sentences uh, and uh, they're not joined correctly. In this case, uh, we're missing uh, punctuation comp completely. Uh, there should be a capital letter here. Uh, the most common mistake also occurs in this paragraph and that is when the concluding sentence does not correspond to the topic sentence. Here's a paragraph about Pinocchio. The reason why I selected this paragraph is because in the concluding sentence, if you read carefully and compare the concluding sentence to the topic sentence, you'll see that the author mentions something new in the concluding sentence. And that's a big no-no. Uh, in the concluding sentence, sorry, in the topic sentence, the author makes the argument that Pinocchio uh, is learning new things like the difference between right and wrong. And then in the concluding sentence, uh, he mentions again that, uh, uh, well, actually he says he was able to distinguish between good and bad or right and wrong. And then adds some new information. He expands on the argument as well as the consequences that each one has. Okay, uh, you might think that during the paragraph you developed your idea and at the end of the paragraph you give us a more developed idea. Well, that's a mistake in this kind of writing. It's supposed that your idea is completely developed before you start writing. And so you give the complete developed argument in the topic sentence. If you have a, a revelation or some new information that you want to express in the concluding sentence, that's an indication that 
you have to go back to the topic sentence and you have to rewrite it. The concluding sentence and the topic sentence always have to correspond in this class. Here's a paragraph that I included uh, because uh, uh, it's an example of when a student doesn't follow instructions and he just writes a summary to a, a fairy tale. Um, uh, that was not the assignment. I didn't ask you to tell me a fairy tale again. Uh, I asked you to make an argument with respect to a famous fairy tale. So you'll see that uh, this student just tried to tell the story again. Okay. Then besides that, the student used the teacher's idea uh, for his paragraph. So for all of the hundreds of fairy tales available for this assignment, this student decided to use the teacher's idea. Hmm. <clears throat> all right. Here's another example of a fairy tale paragraph where the student just basically summarizes the story and uh, you don't have to read very far uh, before you realize that wait a second the students not following instructions this is just a summary of the story you'll see some different kinds of mistakes here um, uh, for example uh, uh, this sentence could have been a great topic sentence and unfortunately when uh, writers are uh, when they don't have a lot of experience when writers when students don't have experience with this kind of writing they could find themselves creating a great argument but they don't recognize that hey that that would be a great topic sentence so that's what happened with this student here that and I put this is not a commentary sentence uh, this is a topic sentence okay uh, there's an incomplete sentence and besides that again the concluding sentence does not correspond with the topic sentence mm -hmm. uh, here's another paragraph and uh, the reason why I selected this one is uh, it, it's a problem that doesn't happen too often but uh, if you compare the topic sentence and the uh, concrete detail well you'll see that the concrete detail does not support the argument made in the topic sentence read the topic sentence and you'll see that the author is making the argument that the witch shows herself to be a compassionate soul well I thought that that was a very daring argument to make and um, I was a little bit surprised uh, so I, when I read uh, the, for example, the concrete detail, of course I expected to find a detail where the witch shows some compassion. But instead, the author spends the rest of the paragraph talking about uh, different kinds of psychotic behaviors that the witch shows. So I guess really that was the argument that the, the author should have made in the topic sentence. For this reason the concrete detail does not support the topic sentence and that's a big mistake. We can see the dangling modifier mistake down here again and uh, as before uh, it occurred when somebody tried to do uh, uh, a, a reduced adverb clause here thus by cheating okay so who is doing the cheating alright uh, well it's the witch but the witch isn't mentioned here. The witch should probably be mentioned right here in the fairy tale, comma, the witch demonstrates her uh, strange uh, attitudes, which apparently was uh, uh, the author's real idea. Okay, so this is a really good paragraph with uh, just a couple of minor mistakes. Mm, but the reason why I included it is because it does include the mistake. It, it, it contains the mistake where the concluding sentence does not correspond with the topic sentence. Uh, read it at your leisure and you'll see that what I'm saying is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have an example of a really good paragraph. Uh, this student really satisfied um, all of uh, the uh, 
the the specifications or requirements uh, of this assignment. Uh, uh, the only thing that might have been done a little bit better is uh, uh, the student could have used some more specific language uh, from the manual uh, to indicate the commentary sentences. Um, the problem with commentary sentences, and these are okay, these are actually okay. Uh, uh, if you state things uh, that are known, that are commonly known, wolves are carnivore creatures, okay, that satisfies, that's a type of explanation or that's a type of analysis. And here again, wolves are also known to be pack hunters. Okay, that, that again is a type of analysis. Okay, so let's talk about commentary sentences because it's the most difficult part of these uh, paragraphs. <coughs> uh, I'm going to mention something that I have shown you in class uh, several times already. Um, I don't have it written out here, but <coughs> the purpose of commentary sentences is to show analysis, explanation, observation, or perhaps insight, which is a, a, pers a special perspective that the author has on a certain topic. So that's what you're supposed to do with commentary sentences. Well, I give you three techniques for generating commentary sentences. And uh, if you don't want me to confuse your sentences with concrete details, uh, you need to use the language from class uh, so that it's very obvious that you're creating commentary sentences. The big mistake is just to continue giving concrete details and you put them in green. Okay, well that doesn't mean that they're commentary sentences just because they are in green. So what can you do to be sure that the teacher will recognize your commentary sentences as commentary sentences? use the language from the manual. Uh, uh, you'll remember that I made a clarification in class that uh, in the manual we found technique number two and now we're calling it technique number one. It's on page five. And we found technique number one and we're calling it technique number two. That's on page number four. Mm -hmm. Technique number one for creating commentary sentences is to use repetitive cohesion and specifically this is a way of rephrasing the concrete detail so that's why we want to have it as technique number one it would be right after the concrete detail and you say indeed or in other words or that is to say and you rephrase the concrete detail you try to make it sound fresh uh, and this qualifies as explanation and explanation is one of the characteristics of a commentary sentence in Jane Schaefer writing. We're counting those repetitive cohesion sentences as commentary sentences. Uh, they are not going to be counted as concrete details. It's repetition, but I'm calling it uh, a, a commentary sentence. It's a good writing technique, and this is a way to practice that. The second method for writing commentary sentences is to try to create sentences with uh, language from the manual. Uh, now you'll see a whole page on page four. It's full of the, this type of language. Uh, some of the easiest to use are this demonstrates, this shows, clearly, obviously. Uh, there are a ton of them there. Yeah. Please excuse the mistake here. That's a, a quotation mark. Uh, if you can create a sentence with some of that language, I'm going to recognize it as language for commentary sentences, and I will count your sentence as a commentary sentence. Okay, there's a third technique, and it's a generic commentary sentence, and uh, you are supposed to use these uh, only in emergencies. Uh, but uh, if you cannot think of any other commentary sentences uh, or uh, you just feel stuck and uh, it, it, the, the words aren't coming out, 
Uh, in an emergency, you can use one of the generic commentary sentences. Um, uh, I explain uh, their validity as uh, it's a technique that gets us closer to our goal, which is language acquisition. Uh, it seems like uh, cheating, uh, but it, it's not cheating. Um, it, you can memorize some, some of those generic commentary sentences and you can use them later. Um, eventually, they will become part of your language. It's language acquisition. So that's why I think that uh, those are fine to use when uh, we, are at, we are in the learning stage. Okay, so if you want to see some uh, really well-developed examples of these techniques for commentary sentences, go to page 21 of your manual and you'll see the paragraph on uh, legalization of marijuana for medical purposes. And for each concrete detail, you'll see three commentary sentences. That's right, three commentary sentences. They're in the manual on page 21. There are three commentary sentences, one for each of the techniques, mm -hmm, uh, for each concrete detail. When you guys write, you only need two commentary sentences for every concrete detail. That's another big point in Jane Schaefer writing. The ratio of commentary sentences to topic sentences is two to one. Every time you have a concrete detail, you have two commentary sentences. Uh, how do you write them? Well, it's suppose that, this is, I'm summarizing now, they are analysis, explanation, observation, or insight. Mm -hmm. uh, techniques to generate those sentences. Technique number one, repetitive cohesion. Technique number two, use language from the manual. Technique number three, in an emergency, you can use generic commentary sentences. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the major mistakes uh, for the uh, Jane Schaefer fairy tale paragraph. Make sure that you're not making any of those big mistakes. Uh, you will be uh, responsible for knowing about those mistakes and avoiding making the same mistakes on the exam when you do a very similar activity. Have a nice day and good luck.